Hello everyone, I welcome you all to another episode of Contract Practices series. In this video, we are going to learn about different types of contract which are used in a construction project. It is not just a learning, but we will take a deep dive into the subject to understand every minute details about every contract types. You will learn about the features of the contract type, about the advantages and disadvantages of the contract, about the rights and responsibilities of the parties involved in that con contract type and most important, how you can select the right contract type for any particular project. So if you have not subscribed to our channel, I will request you to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you can get the notifications as soon as we upload any learning video on this channel. Now let's jump to the topic. Any construction contracts is basically divided into four major types. Number one is separated type of contract, two is management type of contract, integrated contracts and discretionary contracts. This division of contracts is based on the nature of the project. A project may be big, small, complex or maybe in some projects some new technologies are used. So different type of contracts will be selected depending on the nature of the project. Secondly, there is risk taking capacity of client, risk sharing between contractor and the client. So all these factors depends on what type of contract we will choose. So on the basis of all these criteria, a contract is divided into these four types. Now let's move on to separate type of contract. So in separate type of contract, as a term itself suggests that there is something separated. So what is separated here? The responsibility of design and the responsibility of construction or executing the project. The responsibility of design lies with the design consultant and that of the construction lies with the contractor. So the client in case of separate contract has to do all these things of pre-feasibility, feasibility, uh, all these estimations of BOQ, uh, freezing the scope of work. So all these needs to be done prior to handing over the scope of work and design to the contractor. So in separate type of contract, a client need to have sufficient time to start the execution of work. Now let us look at some of the variants of separate type of contract. There are four types of variants of separate type of contract. Number one is lump sum type of contract. Number two is item rate contract. Number three is percentage rate contract. And number four is cost plus percentage rate contract. So here in lump sum contract, client provides the scope of work and the design to the contractor. The design and the scope of work is freezed from the client's end because a, con a contractor has to provide a lump sum rate against the design and the scope of work and the BOQ. So the obligation of the client is to provide the scope of work that he ensures that it will not get varied during the execution of project and second is to provide the design to the contractor. Now the obligations of the contractor is to understand the scope of work. If it is required, the contractor must go to the site and ensure that the design and the site conditions are in congruence. And secondly, he should understand the BOQ and on his understanding, he will quote a lump sum rate. The contractor also has to ensure that the price will not get varied during the execution of the project. The only situation the price can get varied if there is any change in scope from client's end, if there is any change in item from client's end or there is any design change. Let us understand the risk sharing in case of lump sum type of contract. In case of lump sum type of contract, the risk is shifted towards the contractor because the contractor has to provide a lump sum price against a design and the scope of work and the BOQ which is provided to him 
during the tendering stage and that lump sum price will not be changed or modified during the execution stage of the project. So the contractor has to factor in all these things like if there is any fluctuations of price of material or there is any manpower related issues. So the contractor has to factor in all the prices in the lump sum type of contract. Hence the risk is towards the contractor and the client has only risk if the scope of work get changed because in case of variation or any change in work the contractant can come for any claims in future which can lead to dispute or arbitrations so that is the only disadvantage or the risk towards the client hence to summarize the risk sharing by the contractor and the client we can say that the contractors risk are underestimations of pricing the fluctuations of price of material and third is variation or change in the scope of work for the client the risk is change in scope because it, it can lead to additional claims from the contractor now let's have a look on advantage and disadvantage of this contract type so the first advantage and most important advantage of this type of contract is price certainty the price is fixed from the contractor and client will get a clear idea about what is going to be the cost to complete for this project. So if the major criteria for the client is cost to complete or the budget should be fixed and if the client wants a certainty of price, he must go for lump sum type of contract. But yes, there must be fixed design and a fixed scope of work. And there should be a minimum chance or there should be a no chance of any variation or any change in design. Second is the simple process of tendering and selection of contractor. And third is the payment process. Payment process is very simple. The payment is done on the based on the milestones achieved from the contractor. Now let's look at some of the disadvantages of this type of contract. So the first disadvantage is expensive type of contract. Lump sum contracts are generally expensive because a contractor has to factor in some of the uncertainties of future like price fluctuations, like any sort of uh, manpower wastage. So these factors are included in the price. Second disadvantage is uneven distribution of the risk. The risk is towards the contractor's end. And the third disadvantage variation which can lead to dispute or arbitration in future so we can see that this is a sample of lump sum contract boq where uh, electrical work boq is given in this sample and it is clearly referred that this drawing should be referred for the work to be executed now there is item number one it is some power network work having cables bondings and the unit is given in lump sum quantity having one so in case of lump sum contract we can see that the unit will be given in ls and a fixed rate will be quoted by the vendor in this boq so uh, this is a typical example of a lump sum contract boq how we can prepare in a project if you have not subscribed to our channel I will request you to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you can get the notifications as soon as we upload any learning video on this channel.